Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being here. Today, I will be talking about swing trading and uh, swing trading into profits. Um, please give me a sound check. Just want to make sure that you guys can hear me. I had some issues with the computer earlier today. So just want to have a heads up and uh, all right, just type a one in the chat box if you can hear me. I think David, everybody can hear me. Okay. All right, cool. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Awesome. All right. Let's get started, everybody. First of all, how many of you guys in here uh, swing trade? Give me a hand. Give me either a hands up or give me a one in the chat box. How many of you guys already swing trade? Swing trade. Okay. Awesome. All right. Quite a few guys are swing trading already. All right. We don't have a lot of time, but I would ask you right now, what is your favorite thing about swing trading? <laughs> if I would ask you right now, what, what is your favorite thing about swing trading? Because I'm going to tell you what my favorite thing is here. Uh, swing trading is actually uh, my preferred style of trading because it's where I have my money working for me. And not only that, but I don't have to stay glued to my computer. So you could walk around, you could, you know, do your errands, you could do whatever you want into swing trading because the time frame is wider. So you don't have to sit or babysit any kind of trades. Less stressful. You got it. More profitable. Oh my gosh, Danny, we're on the same page. All right. So literally uh, swing trading takes about 10 minutes work day for me. Uh, I do a scan in the weekend. So that's a couple of hours. Uh, but in general, it doesn't take more than 10 minutes per day. And that is because I go through the charts that I have on. And uh, when, when I see, you know, a trading opportunity, I take it. If I see that there is uh, uh, a ranging market, then there's no action to take. Or if I see that, let's say the price advanced into targets, uh, then I know that I have to raise my stops, right? So that's exactly uh, uh, why I love swing trading because of, uh, of, of the freedom that you have over your time. So before we begin, I want to make sure that everybody, you know, uh, takes a little bit of time to acknowledge the risk disclaimer. And basically what we're saying here is that all information provided by us, by Trade Aloud, including myself, uh, in this webinar is for educational purpose only. It should not be cons uh, construed as investment advice regarding the purchase or sale of securities, options, futures, forex, or any instrument of any kind. And I'm pretty sure you guys know that trading involves a really high level of risk and may not be suitable for traders, investors, swing traders, because you could lose money if you don't know what you're doing. So before deciding to trade, everybody should carefully consider your objectives. Uh, your level of experience, and definitely your risk appetite. So let's let's continue. Uh, what is swing trading all about? It's about taking control of your financial future. Uh, and basically, it's letting your money work for you because your money is definitely going to uh, represent your employees. I consider my charts my employees. And the charts are telling me whether, you know, I got I have to get in or I have to get out of the trade or I have to sit on, uh, sit on my hands. For example, you know, I day traded in the first two hours. Yesterday, I had a presentation with you guys. So that is my income producing style and whatever I have from my income producing style, like I said, I'm paying myself a salary and whatever I have extra, I'm putting into my swing trading account. And today I'm going to share with you some of the, the, the basic principles of swing trading and how you can get started into swing trading and having your money work for you. So for those of you that are new in here, my name is Anka Metcalf and I'm the CEO and founder of TradeLaw.com, which is a training education firm that is specialized in educating individuals how to day trade, swing trade, uh, and invest into the markets uh, in any market condition as well. So whether you're trading uh, futures, commodities, whether you're trading stocks or cryptos. Um, I have been doing this professionally for over 20 years and prior to becoming a professional independent trader, I come with 10 plus years in investment banking. I also run a swing trading service for stocks and ETFs since 20, uh, 2010, so that's 13 years. And I also run a trading room for futures that's a power income uh, room to um, create income for generating income since 2017, all with transparent track records. And we do all offer education for swing trading and day trading as well. I do specialize in high velocity moves. And what that means is that I look for inflection points into the market that can deliver um, literally the progress of the trade 
as an instant gratification. Um, also, designer of an institutional proprietary trading system that is based on price support resistance, and I pay attention to eight layers of price support resistance. Supply and demand only represents about 20 to 25% of the equation. Um, I also um, am very specific about trigger times, price zones, chart synchronicity, divergency, and a strict set of trading rules, plus a 10 point square system that enables myself and my traders to identify trades with these. This is me throughout the media. Um, CNBC over here, you know, various uh, shows and expos. All right. So if you want to go, get a hold of us, you can definitely reach us at tradealow.com and on social media, you can definitely reach us at um, um, with, with, the, uh, with the handle of Trade Out Loud. All right. So what is swing trading? And by the way, guys, I'm going to answer all the questions. I'm going to allocate about five to 10 minutes towards the end of the presentation for Q&A. All right, so today we're going to talk about swing trading. So what is swing trading? Because there's a lot of things going on right now and everybody has seems to come with a different definition about swing trading. Uh, so we're going to talk about swing trading. We're going to talk about investing. We're going to talk about swing, whether swing trading is right for you, whether it fits your lifestyle or not, uh, whether you can live through the trades, what account size you need and all that fun stuff. Um, I'm going to give you the reasons why I love swing trading, other than the fact that it only I only allocate about 10 minutes a day. And how to spot opportunities in any kind of market condition. So we're going to go through a lot of charts today as well. So swing trading, and somebody has mentioned over here, I think uh, uh, Danny has mentioned it uh, earlier, swing trading is the easiest trading style to make money. That's right. It's not day trading, but because, uh, and trust me, I'm coming from a day trading, uh, you know, extensive day trading background, uh, have been day trading for over 20 years. And I know that tr day trading is very tedious. You have to be really good at day trading in order to succeed because there's one thing to teach day trading to someone. And there's another thing to day trade with the person in a uh, day trading room every single day. So I do that. I do both. Uh, and my performance is very transparent. You can see it on my website, but it's very tedious. You have to be very, very careful, very attentive to what's happening into the market. You have to know the market context. You have to go for really precise, uh, precise uh, areas of interest, precise stops. Uh, you have to have a precise risk unit that you need to apply and trades are super fast. Uh, it's very intimidating at one point for a lot of people, and not a lot of people succeed in day trading. In fact, the failure rate is over 97% because the pace is super fast, and you have to get really uh, good with the rhythm of the market as well with the rhythm uh, of your personal uh, style of trading. But swing trading has a bigger dimension, so we can accommodate a lot of fluctuations. For example, we had Powell of the speaking yesterday, and we know what happened to the market. So as soon as he opened his mouth and he was talking about an increase in the rate hike, the market started to go down, right? So the market started to go down. Now, the reality is that when you're swing trading, that is not going to affect you because if you have a technical pattern that is going to develop uh, and a setup is going to develop on a higher time frame because your zip code that we're going to talk about in a moment, uh, your time frames are going to be really wider, are going to be daily charts, weekly charts. Uh, then you can live through these price fluctuations. The only thing is that you need to know and you need to respect the rules of the game and you need to be very patient to wait for the setup. So just as with day trading, you need to have a lot of patience, but in swing trading, you need to have a little bit more patience than even in day trading, believe it or not. So swing trading and investing 101. So swing trading is the sweet spot between day trading and position trading investing. And in fact, this is the newest addition to the market of swing trading. So back in the day, all there was, was investing and day trading. Now they developed this core, right? We're trading somewhere in the middle. So it is between day trading and between investing, right? It generates high probability trades and it offers the best chances of success. You are going to get the best return on your investment through swing trading. Swing trading positions will be hold from two days to a couple of weeks or until the market proves itself. What does that mean? Because if you get into a trade, so for example, I got into a trade 
Um, I'm going to give you a personal example. I got into a trade in JP Morgan at the beginning of February, but because the pattern is sideways and continues to be sideways, guess what? I'm still in the trade. I'm still stuck. A month later, it's exactly a month later, and I'm still into the pattern I'm, because it's stuck, right? It has been sideways. So if it breaks about, so you're going to stay in that trade as long as the stop is not being violated and you're going to be in that trade until you hit target. It's very easy. So in general swing trading uh, in a trending market position and swing trading and into the market positions are held from somewhere between two days and two weeks, but it varies with the market conditions. Don't be bored. I find that the biggest mistake that traders make is that they get bored being in one position. So what they do is they take themselves out. And after they take themselves out, the price starts running, right? It always happens. Um, the focal time frames for swing trading. So we're talking about that, um, um, that sweet spot that is between day trading and investing. Um, the Time frames, the executional time frames and the analytical time frames that you need to pay attention to are as close as the one hour and four hour. If you're having, for example, some um, um, really trending action into some stocks, and those are swing trades that can last, the um, like really short term swing trades that can last from two days to about the four days or five days max. But of course, there are the general swing trades that last from two days to a couple of weeks. And those specific trades are designed to trigger off of the daily charts and weekly charts. And especially for options, I know some of you guys may do option. So these options um, um, may work better if you're just skipping the daily and just going for the weekly. And then you have position trading, which is long-term trading, investing, which I absolutely love. Um, and I will be coming uh, with soon with a course on this and about dividend and how you can live off dividends. Uh, and you don't need to have a lot of money to get started with it. So that's really phenomenal. So that would generate between somewhere between five and 10,000, let's say, even with smaller accounts um, per month, which is phenomenal. Uh, so position trades will be held from a few months to a few years. OK, it focuses on higher time frames, mainly monthly charts, quarterly charts, annual charts. But you can find entries as soon as weekly charts in dominant trends. So swing trading and investing investing captures the portion of the swing from um, of, uh, from the swing low to the swing high. So definitely it's into um, especially investing is you know, just moving from down from a low point to a high point. And it's all based on technical analysis because especially position trading and investing, uh, these trades are executed on such higher time frame that the noise that the intraday trading produces or the, uh, let's say, the regular earning season uh, that happens or whether Powell is speaking or not, or whether you have any kind of state of the union or whatever it is, it doesn't produce a divergence uh, uh, in the market uh, in such a matter where it would take you out of the trade. So you can live through those trades and you don't even have to watch the chart. So I watch my investing charts probably once every two to three weeks or a month. And that is because I am literally into the market every single day. And I do recommend that before we continue, that if you are a day trader, if you're a swing trader, and if you're an investor, please have separate accounts because you may be tempted to put the day trading hat on when you're swing trading because you're seeing uh, you know, some divergency like we saw yesterday into the market. Uh, or you may uh, you may be mismanaging a longer term position because of fear of the pullback. So let that account play out. And that's why I like to focus more on dividend stocks, because those are playing out much better than anything else. So swing trading is not about capturing the entire trend. No, it's by far. So swing trading is about finding the best possible entry opportunity and profiting from the stock's momentum on up moves and down moves by not live li literally living through reversals. So you can go long and you could go short in swing trading. You can totally do that. Swing trading is a simple strategy where you enter a trade when the price breaks above 
a pullback or reversal pattern or breaks ab above a range. I personally love ranges because ranges are really consolidation areas that prove a lot that whether a support level is holding or resistance level is holding. But what I look for is these pockets on the bottom or these tops right here. This is a sell pocket. This is the buy pocket. So it's this V formation. These are called pivots. And I love to trade with these pivots. Now, the key is uh, to know how to enter these upswings or downswings because I literally, you know, when I trade, I have exact price points where I enter exact price points where I put the stop. I don't wing the stop. So especially in swing trading uh, and in day trading, obviously, but, um, um, you know, you have to be very exact. You're either committed to that trade or not, because if you decide that say, hey, I'm going to give it a little bit more room, you're entering into another R, you're entering into another risk unit that you have, uh, you know, in your pocket, and you're not ready to put it back on. So look, if the trade is not working out, establish a stop exit, it's better off to exit than to live through a catastrophe. So the elements of the trades, are very important is the entry. The entry point is where your capital is at risk. The stop is preventing you from losing more than your allocated risk. Your targets are level of inflection where you have resistance areas if the price is going up, right? Uh, or support levels if the price is going down. And definitely when the price is going to reach certain areas of resistance or certain areas of support, the price is going to have a particular behavior. And that goes into management. Management is very important because that is what's going to make or break you as a trader. The ability of you developing phenomenal management skills is going to definitely increase your bottom line as a trader. So um, have a management plan that is very simple. Write it down into your trading plan and make sure that you know what to do at each stage of the trade. For example, I'm going to give you my example of what I do. Um, when my price hits target one, because target one is the easiest target to achieve because it brings um, uh, the price, for example, up with velocity and it's hitting the first level of resistance, typically at target one, target one is the easiest to, to achieve because it comes with algorithmic participation. It comes with institutional power push. And at target one, usually you have a, a plethora of algos that are taking profits. So that means that the price is likely to pull back from there. Now, at that point, we really don't have a handle to say, hey, is the price going to retrace to my entry or we're going to have a shallow retracement or is it going to go back down to my original stop? And because there are these three factors that are unknown, what I personally do is I take half off into my target one. Based on the technical pattern, I raise my stop into the entry level. So I put my stop at break even and I let the trade go further from there because if the mechanics of the technicals are lining up, then the likelihood of continuation and target two are high. And therefore, when I achieve target two, I scale up, for example, a quarter. I lift my stop into the next level of, of support at that point, which is the prior resistance, which is my target one, and so on and so forth. So I have a plan that is very easy for me to manage. So I can hold a gazillion of positions or I could do something else in the meantime because I have a plan. And if you have a plan, it's going to be so much easier for everybody to live through the trades because you know what to expect. Hey. The price is not always going to go up. The price is going to pull back. Sometimes you're going to have stops. So that is part of the plan as well. All right. So who is swing trading for? So swing trading is for busy uh, individuals and traders that have very busy lifestyles and want to manage their own long-term money better than any professional. Because with any professional, let's face it, what is the return with a money manager? It's about between 6 and 10%, right? That is... Like in a best case scenario, you pay an arm and a leg 
in commissions. Trust me, I had my money with the money manager a really long time ago before I started ma managing my own money. I've worked in an investment firm, so I could tell you, you know, right off the bat that they're making a lot of commissions off of these uh, products and, uh, you know, uh, uh, from the services that they're providing. So whether the market is going up or down, they're going to profit from your account, from your money. Now, how about you turn things around? You learn how to swing trade. You learn how to invest your money, how to take care of your money, and you don't have to pay those fees. And you're going to be more hands-on because it's your money and it's your position, your decision. Now, it, for part-time traders that do not want to sit in front of the computer all day, and this is me right here, like don't want to sit in front of the computer. I have done my fair share of market and sitting in front of the uh, market for years and years and years. Now it's time, you know, to, to break loose a little bit. So I day trade two hours a day and manage my trades 10 minutes a day. And I don't have to pay any kind of fees. And I take better decisions than my money manager did. And plus, when I wanted to pull my money out, I had to pay so many commissions and, you know, penalties that it was ridiculous. Um, I only got a small portion of my money back. So it's really worth to, uh, you know, literally to, uh, you know, put some time and uh, learn how to invest and learn how to trade. So swing trading is a wealth generation style of trading, just like investing, but it's a little bit more aggressive because you, uh, it, you're required to uh, be active in the market, for example, every week. And almost every single day, because you're going to spend about 10 minutes a day in investing, you're just viewing your portfolio, maybe once once a month, or maybe once every three weeks, or maybe once every quarter. All you need uh, to do, and all you need um, to literally to manage is like that 10 minutes a day, and you can work from home, you could literally manage your swing trades on the go. So day trading, no, you got to have the real estate. If you're doing this, Literally for income generation, you need to be in the market. You need to have the real estate. Like I said, you need to have at least two to three, two to three monitors to watch the market behavior because you're not a market maker. I know, and we talked about last, uh, we talked about last, uh, we talked about yesterday about the fact, you know, that there are some traders that specialized in mini SMP newsflash they're not mar market makers and for example today on a day like today they would have done nothing in this market where you had some relative strength into Nasdaq just just saying you know ju just saying just wanted to make sure that I you know just keep an open mind okay just keep an open mind because things are not what they seem okay so um the one of the best things that I can think of in, for swing trading is that you literally make your money work for you. And that's the thing that I love the best. I don't have to lift a finger. All I have to do is I have to work a little bit in the weekend because that is my, whether do it on Friday or you want to do it on Saturday. I usually do it on Saturday or on Sunday. Um, I have my breakfast and I have my laptop and I scan through stocks and uh, I do scan manually. I do use a couple of scanners um, and I find the best training opportunities. I analyze the sectors and see when there, if there's a, uh, if there's a sector rotation just about to happen, if there's money shifting from one sector to another. So these are things that, you know, you could do, for example, in a couple hours, whether you want to do it on Saturday or Sunday, then that is if you want to do it yourself, or you could just, you know, you know, sign up with my program and I do all the, all the work for you. So it all depends. I'm just saying that you could do it or you're on your own. All right. So how to select winning stocks, right? So, okay. So now that I convinced you, it's like work 10 minutes a day, sign me up, right? So what do you need to do? Well, it takes a proven strategy to select winning trades or investment. The stocks need to be fundamentally sound for long or medium term trading. Uh, fundamentals have to be aligned with technicals. And by the way, I am 90% technical, but yes, I pay attention 10% uh, to fundamentals. You have to buy stocks that are on sale always. Buy stocks that are in pullbacks, but always look for pullback pockets uh, and uh, buy pockets or sell pockets, whether you're long or short. Uh, and it takes uh, the risk out of investing and creates great risk on a great a great reward on your investment. So when to buy? When certain events happen into the market, these events create pullbacks. The pullbacks 
uh, make the share prices go lower to a level that becomes appealing to the buyer, right? They're on discount. It's just like when you go shopping, right? And, um, you know, they, they have like the sales sign on, right? It's like 25% off or 50% off or 75 or, or it's on clearance, 80% 80, 80 off, right? That's how your behavior should be in front of the market. Don't fear pullbacks into the market, especially if you're a swing trader or an investor, just embrace them because the stocks are on sale. That's a celebration. So when the market dips, that should be a celebration because it offers you an opportunity to leg in, to buy some stocks for invest, investing, to buy some uh, stocks for short term. Okay. So um, like I said, when to buy, when these events are happening, for example, 20, uh, um, uh, 2007, 2008, 2009, that was a stocking, huge, huge, huge area to buy for investing purposes. For example, 2020, massive opportunity into the market, phenomenal year we had at Trade Out Loud in uh, 2020, 2021, 2022 as well. You have to look for the opportunities. There's always some sector that is going to dominate. So you got to make sure that you pay attention to everything that is moving around us. Be, pay attention to the narratives. All right. So um, do I need these events to get in? Like, really, do you really need to wait for these events? Well, you know, not all the time. Okay. There for investing, yes, you kind of like have to wait. And when the market is, uh, you know, kind of like in a pullback phase, like it was in 2020, like it was, I don't know, last year, for example, I do have levels that I put on my watch and I put alerts. And as soon as the price action goes into my alert, I have a specific pullback zone that I watch, whether it's a fib that I'm watching or whether it's a minor support if it's still into an uptrend. And that is where I would like to start legging in to my investment uh, if I want to purchase that. Uh, but make sure that when you apply that system, make sure that you scale into uh, scale into the trade. So that is for the investing purposes. For swing trading, I don't scale in. The entry is the entry, the stop is the stop. So it's pretty much... Uh, I pretty much have the same guidelines as with day trading. The other thing that you need to be very careful is to be diversified. So for example, you know, if you want to swing trade, don't swing trade just airlines or swing trade healthcare products or swing trade, um, uh, let's say tech. Uh, have a di diversification of your portfolio on a weekly basis. So I try to cover as many uh, sectors on each weekend and to find what's moving, what's rocking, what's, you know, what has a different, um, uh, you know, behavior in the market. So for example, today, Google is very strong, right? And a relatively, you know, kind of like choppy market. And that's one of the reasons why NASDAQ, the Qs is stronger today, because we're having a really good performance in, uh, in Google. And there are some other stocks that are holding in in, uh, in NASDAQ. So keep in mind that, you know, evaluating what's under the hood, evaluating your indices, your ETF, the Qs, the spies, the diamonds, et cetera, is very important because then you're knowing that you need to go in and see what stock is, um, you know, outperforming, for example, NASDAQ, right? Or, or the Qs. Uh, stay, again, this is my personal thing. It doesn't need to apply for everybody, but I'm staying away from airlines, hotels, biotechs, et cetera, unless, you know, you swing trade. I never invest in those because, for example, if you invest in biotech or healthcare or something something like that, and if there's an FDA, um, um, you know, decision that is being made on one of their drugs, if they're not approved, uh, you know, the stock can literally plummet down double digit percentages and all that stuff. So it's not fun. Okay. It could go for you, but it could go against you. Right. So these are very sensitive. So if there's, uh, for example, um, uh, airlines are again, very difficult ho uh, hotels as well. So travel, it, it's again, very difficult. Just remember the 2020, what happened in 2020, right? Okay. Um, 
Swing trading and investing, again, it's about uh, it's about not only following the footprints of those really big guys, but being in sync with them because we have tools available now for the retail trader that investors use. I mean, this is the beauty about it. We live in that age where we have access to every single tool that every single investor has uh, access to. So it gives us the opportunity if we're you know well-educated to get in into those uh, uh, inflection points. We have so much data, guys. We have access to, um, for example, you know, Fibonacci. So, I mean, that's like old school, right? But we have access, I don't know, to dark pools. We have access to uh, all these system algorithms and all that stuff and key levels, key uh, technical levels on the charts, formations that institutions pay attention to. They program the algorithms to fire into. So we have access to all that. OK, so it it's really um, a great opportunity for the retail trader right now, you know, to get involved into the market. And you have to follow cycles because there are cycles into the market and you have to have a lot of patience to go through these cycles. Institutional buying creates the follow through. So remember, if you're getting into a trade just because you like it and uh, if it's not on demand, guess what's going to happen? It, it's not going to go anywhere because you need that institutional participation. This is one of the reasons why, and I'm going to share with you in the next uh, few slides, the volume of the stock is very important. So when you decide what to trade, the first thing that I look at is the volume, because if it doesn't have a really good volume, uh, if it doesn't have high volume, it means that it's not really tradable, right? So it doesn't have the power for follow through. Uh, I'm not going to share with you some of the basics of volume that I, I need for my trading in order to get in trades. And then uh, we're going to go through my performance and see how I did um, and uh, throughout these uh, over 13 years of uh, of the program of my uh, uh, stock swing trader program. Institutional buying occurs during really strong uptrends on technical pullbacks and areas of accumulation. So these are some technical areas. Like I said, anybody has access to these. You just have to put them in a lot of, of, you don't even have to put in a lot of effort to find out where these areas are. And you can, uh, you can actually predict uh, what stock or what group of stocks they're going to be stocking next. The buy zones provide clear buyable points, and that's very, it has to be very uh, uh, evident on the technical chart. So now when it comes to whether swing trading or investing, these are the types of stocks that you need to, um, you know, kind of have a good focus on. So first of all, there are growth stocks. So usually in new or fast growing industries, we have the potential to give shareholders, um, you know, greater, re they have providing, they're providing shareholders better returns. However, they're the most volatile class of stocks and may be just as likely to go down in price. Okay, these are the growth stocks. Then there are the value stocks, right? These, uh, those of uh, those of companies with growth potential that are currently selling at a low price relative to their intrinsic value. It can take time for their true value to be reflected in their price. And there is income stocks. I, I love income stocks and blue chip stocks, to be very honest. So income stocks generally not expected to appreciate greatly in share price, but typically pay steady dividends. Utilities are an example of companies that have historically been considered income oriented. I love these income stocks. And I'm going to have a course that is going to come out just for dividend and just for income um, um, these dividends. So by investing, you generate income on a monthly basis and you don't have to have a lot of money. This is something that I do for my personal accounts and I have been doing for so long, but I really didn't have time to put together that course because I'm so involved in the market. I trade every single day for income and, you know, that takes a lot of time and effort on my side. Uh, and then you'll have the blue chip stocks. Now, stocks of large, well-known companies with really good reputations and strong records of profit growth. This is what you want to trade. You know, this, this is exactly what you want to swing trade, right? So they are considered safe investments as they generally generate dividends as well. Uh, and penny stocks, uh, these are inexpensive 
they're risky. Uh, there is a certain point in time when I would say pay attention to penny stocks. I, however, invested in tons of penny stocks uh, back in 2008 when there was a huge evaluation uh, happen. And right now they're trading. So I bought them for pennies and now they're trading at $7, $10, even $25 some. So those are the opportunities that you can get from swing trading and investing. So when it comes to trading, no one has a crystal ball, okay? It's just hard work. 95%, like I said, is technical or 90% and 10% fundamental or 5% fundamental. It's around those ranges. Uh, but you have to keep in mind the fundamental side because you cannot take a really good diligent decision in, until you uh, I have a really good picture about these uh, two fields. So um, first of all, this is my trail of luck criteria of selecting stocks. Number one, uh, it has to have a good history of earning three years, three years minimum, and or at least three prior quarterly earnings beat. So they need to have a really good performance. Last three quarters, they need to be up. Uh, so expectations as well. Um, enter trades after they have posted earnings. So I don't execute a trade before earnings. In fact, even if I find a beautiful setup and we still have, let's say, a uh, week uh, until earnings, I'm just going to skip it. But I may put that on the list for day trade. That's stock to day trade. But I'm not going to swing trading because I don't want to get caught in it. And I don't want to get caught in a sideways action because uh, typically, um, you know, there are very few stocks that run up into earnings or sell into earnings. The majority of stocks just um, base into earnings and they wait for the right decision. And it's only normal to uh, they they wait for the uh, for the I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, they wait for their uh, for their earnings uh, results. Right. Uh, and I think it's super safe to wait. Uh, what I do is I actually watch the price after earnings. So I watch it the first day. I don't enter on the first day, but I gauge it on the second day, third day. If it has a setup forming, then that is where I'm going to put my money into. So I always look after earnings. Uh, look for companies that make a splash, have new products, services, launches, et cetera. I tip the, the one that is notorious for this is Apple, right? Everybody's looking into Apple. Everybody's looking now into Microsoft, into Amazon, into Google. These are a Tesla, uh, for example, Meta, you know, NVIDIA. These are the type of stocks that, you know, pr usually produce splashes. Then you have to get technical and get back to the technical chart evaluate the trend because that is the most important thing you have to look at the volume is the volume increasing because if the volume increasing those are institutional leg so institutions of uh, that that is the, t uh, the uh, that is the uh giveaway that institutions are legging into that trade the volume goes up so watch that volume you want to see spikes of volume you want to see ranges at um, all-time highs or at FIB locations. So technically it has to be very appealing. You look for volatility contraction as well. You're looking, so what that means is that you're going to look for narrow range bars as well. Remember the biggest moves are not coming from really big bars. They're not. So if you see wide bars, wide range bars on your technical chart, very few decisions are taken. Probably continuation patterns from there. but if you want to stock some really good risk to reward on your trades, you have to uh, you have to look for really small bodied uh, candlesticks. Um, so positioning within the sector and indices, you always are going to have leaders and ladder uh, laggards. You're always going to have relative strength or relative weakness. Just like today, we had we have the cues that are leading and we have for example dow and russell that are a little bit weaker and we have the spies which is relatively sideways so always pick the strongest right for maximum momentum higher and the weakest for maximum momentum lower because you need to pick a stock for example if you have 
a, a strong market environment, let's say the queues despise everything is strong, and you have, let's say, for example, Google that is really strong on the day, that is one of the trades that whether you're day trading or swing trading, that is something that you need to pick because that is going to run higher faster than the rest of, of the stock that may be weak. And that is in a strong market environment. You don't want to uh, you don't want to stop a short trade in a very strong environment. OK, and the other way around. And you have to uh, you know, pay attention to institutional participation account. And that is that accounts for 85 percent of the market volume. L like I said, pay attention to that volume, pay attention to the pattern, pay attention to the levels, because th these are very important factors that are going to contribute to the success of your trade. And of course, block trades or even uh, block trades or, um, you know, dark pools. Uh, these are, again, uh, really good indications that there is going to be a splash that is going to be produced sometime soon into the market based upon technical levels. All right. So when we enter a trade, we want to focus on the cycle, the buy, the sell, the short or the pullback, uh, and select the optimum entry that will generate the best reward. I'm going to show you some examples in a second. So entries, what are entries? Entries are early points. Um, within a potential leading stocks consolidation or reversal from the correction pattern. A buy pocket, because we talked about those V formations, whether on the bottom or the top, right? The tops and the bottoms that form that little half, right? Uh, the buy pocket is a buy setup in a continuation of a buy point uh, for a leading stock that is already firmly uh, formed in a strong trend. I'm going to show you some examples soon. Uh, this offers both a way to get on board strong leaders, uh, strong leaders later uh, in the uptrends. And because they, they go up, they pull back, they go up, they pull back, but the trajectory is always higher. This enables you even to add to the position. If you have heard the term of add or reduce, or if you have heard the term of pyramid trading, that is exactly what I'm talking about here. So it's always great when you have a trend, for example, and while the trend is strong, that is when you push the pedal to the metal. When the market is junky like it is right now, that is the time to find unique trading opportunities, more so based on relative strength and weakness. Uh, the trade allow uh, strategy looks to buy close to the 20 or the 50 SMA or the 10 or the 20 uh, weekly SMA, and that is for institutional support. There are a lot of algorithms right there. There are a lot of institutions that are looking at these locations. And the stock needs to be correlated with the indices and the positioning of its sector. So it's not as easy. You have to look at the sector, and that stock needs to be a leader within the sector, and you have to match that with the market environment, what's under the hood, the cues, the spies, whatever, wherever that stock belongs into. All right. So I'm going to show you an example of some really awesome dividend stocks. Uh, these are, for example, uh, IBM. So when I, you know, take a trade, an investment trade, I take investments that are decades, you know, that I'm considering holding for decades. And some of them are active investing trades. So active investing trades, I typically, you know, hold for a few months to let's say seven or eight months. Uh, if I try to hold these uh, active trades, I pay attention to the strong technical patterns. Okay. Okay. But I also pay attention to dividends because I want to get paid. Right. For every share, for example, IBM pays a dollar and 63 cents. Home Depot pays a dollar and 50 cents. Okay, 3M pays, for example, a dollar and 47 cents and so on. So you can see that and you can find, you know, all of this information, all this information is actually going to be available and uh, the new course that I'm going to be uh, building on, what are the best stocks to invest? I'm going to show you stats from my portfolio and how I'm literally creating income from that portfolio as well, right? You want to retire early, you want to trade smart. And trust me, this is something that not a lot of money managers are going to tell you. And not a lot of traders know about this, right? Not a lot of traders have access to this. All right. So number one mistake in trading, traders only look for stock picks, okay? And always be part of the 90% that fail and lose money because you need to understand the system. Guys, you need to understand how it works, how a buy works, how a sell works. And you might, the reality is that you have to dive a little bit deeper to see what is underneath. And you have to be willing to put in the work.
And you only need to put in the work once because you only learn once. You learn the system once, right? I don't care where you're learning. You may, you know, be self-taught or, you know, you find a lot of information on the internet. But as long as you're educated, that's all that matters, okay? So the biggest component is understanding the trades because if you understand the trades, you have confidence, right? You have confidence. You know that if the price pulls back to a certain level, there is, you know, some kind of price symmetry that has worked before on the technical chart. And that gives you, you know, for, you know, if you put that together with the trend and everything else, that gives you more confidence that price is going up, for example. Okay. Now, you can, you can, you're only going to learn this skill once in your lifetime, like I said, and I don't care where you're getting your education from. Yes, we do offer courses. I don't care if you take my course or not. Okay. The reality is that you need to know how to do it. Uh, don't rely hundred percent on a service because you're trading, not unless you're in sync with the level of education of that particular person, you may have a service that is just starting off, or you may have a service that has no track record. You may be with a service that is, I don't know, mumbo jumbo. I don't know. There are a lot of things out there that are kind of like suspicious, but be very careful when you find, when you, you know, follow a system or when you trade someone because you're trading someone else's plan. Okay. And you have to make sure that that person that you're following has a really solid track record and not only for a year or for a month, for a decade, at least. Uh, and I said this earlier, you know, um, you're going to literally fly, um, uh, um, through any kind of recession. Now today I heard the word recession again. It was like on CNBC and I don't really listen to CNBC in the morning. It's like, everybody was shocked in the trading room today. Cause I'm like, like, guys, I was so bored. It's like, I'm going to turn CNBC on to see what the hell is going on. But the reality is that they pronounce the R word again, recession. Okay, you can trade from home. And in fact, you can actually, and this is the system like swing trading. You could do it from a laptop. You could do it from your phone. I scan, believe it or not, you know, when we're taking like a road trip, we're going very often to the Keys in the weekend. Okay, so when, when I'm sitting, you know, um, I'm looking through my phone, I'm scanning. So I'm scanning on my phone or I'm scanning on my tablet while we're getting to the destination, right? So I'm using that time to scan. You can do that on a laptop. You could do that on an iPad. You can't day trade it that way, but definitely that you could do that, okay? So you don't have to have the real estate. If you're serious about day trading, I don't care what anybody else is saying, you need the real estate. You need to see what the heck is going on in the market. You need to have eyes everywhere, okay? Um, to make a really good decision, to have a velocity move. Oh yeah, if I really am watching, you know, just one chart until I'm bored to tears. Yeah, okay. And if I have, I don't know, crappy kind of trader or whatever, you know, and if I'm not making money consistently, you know, yeah, yeah, you watch that. I'm telling you, trading is much more serious than some may think. So make money while other, individual, other individuals, remember they were waiting for their stimulus checks? Ooh. Bad. Well, we were earning from everybody in my progress from dividends, okay? Uh, income producing from day trading. Have a heck of a fun swing trading, okay? So 10 ways to generate income, swing trading in 2023. Let the chart do the talking. Don't just force trades. Let the chart do the talking and be very patient. Pay attention to technicals. Uh, patience to wait for the pattern and the risk level. Select the proper time frame for each style. So know your time frame. Okay, know your time frame. Don't go in a swing trade. Don't go in a swing trade. Don't and not put a stop in and say, um, uh, you know what? It just uh, passed through my stop. Uh, I think I guess right now I'm an investor. <laughs> don't do that. Okay, don't do that. Uh, don't overthink. Okay, that's, you know, because if the pattern is evident, if it's in front of you, take the trade. But if it's not evident, if you have to squint to, you know, try to determine something into that pattern, just don't take the trade. Okay, go with the trend, buy the dip. Okay, and by, by the way, buying the dip is not a strategy. Okay, buy the dip is not the strategy. Remember, remember buying the dip <laughs> uh, in 2020, 
We don't have those 2020 conditions. It's totally different, okay? And don't be stubborn, okay? Game plan. You got to zoom in. You got to zoom in on the bigger technical image. Focus on trend trades. Uh, trade. If you like to trade runner up in, uh, runner ups into trading, do it via options because those are less riskier. Okay. Zoom and on the time frame where the pattern is forming because sometimes you may have a pattern that is forming on the daily. Sometimes you may have a pattern that is forming on the weekly. Okay. Have precise trailing in place, so that means management plan. So again, make sure that you assess your risk per trade. How many hours am I going to risk this week? Okay. You may have, by the way, a week where you're not going to have any kind of trades, or you may have a very active week where you're going to have 20 trades, or you may have a week where you have only one trade. Okay. So the rules are you have to pay attention to the environment, also seasonality, because they enter seasonality cycles. Uh, pay attention to earnings, be diversified, use limit orders. Follow the overall market industry group. Pick relative strength and weakness, weakness based on the market because you want those system gratifications. You don't want to be a sitting duck in trades. You want to have your money work for you all the time. You want to make money, you know, just bank it, just reinvest it into the market. And multi-time frame alignment is a sink, okay? So I was mentioning volume earlier, right? Volume is very important. Trade stocks that have relative high volume relative high volume. So that means that you need to look at a couple of days to about a week before, and you have to have that, that volume go up a little bit, that curb go up a little bit. You want to see participation. That is an indication that institutions are lagging in the trade. Trade stocks that have pattern of, that have a, 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 a pattern behavior of beating earnings. Okay. Ideally look for stocks that are trading uh, above the 20 and the 50 FMA. That is what institutions are looking for. Hedge funds love that area. Uh, look for stocks. This is so important right here. This is the most important thing. Look for stocks that trade at least 1 million shares a day. 1 million shares. I get a lot of questions. I get a lot of questions from my traders that say, oh, I found the stock. Look at the pattern. It's gorgeous. It's amazing. It's textbook. And I go look at it. As, the first thing that I look at is the volume. And I'll go, uh, yeah, no. I mean, look at the volume of 200,000 shares traded. No, you got to have at least 1 million shares traded. All right. Now, successful traders are the educated traders. Like I said, I don't care where you're getting your education from. Just make sure that you put your effort into learning. Okay. You got to be prepared. You got to mitigate risk, learn from failure, always adapt, believe in accountability. Now, all successful traders are the traders that are uneducated. They wing it. They ignore the risk. They go like, oh, yeah, I'm going to risk 100 shares in this one, and then I'm going to buy 2,000 shares of that one, okay? Um, or I'm going to risk, uh, you know, um, $5,000 on this trade, but this trade, uh, I don't think I like it so much. I'm going to risk only $500. Have the same risk on all the trades. Don't be all over the place, okay? So if you want to make the jump and literally trade 10 minutes a day, to into a six or seven figure income. Remember that those dividends pile up, right? And they create income. Um, your checklist is education first, fund the account after you have the education, um, have a trading plan. It's so important to have to know to go through all those stages so you don't freak out when the trade goes against you or the trade hits target one. Do your homework, execute, never chase. When you chase, what do you do when you chase? You run after someone, you run after the price. You gotta be in sync with the price because that's what education does. It gets you on the same, uh, um, it levels out the playing field with the institutional traders. Position size, trailing to targets, let your winners run and cut your, your loss, loss losers and always be aware of the market conditions. So if you have a desire to make money, and if you have a desire to make trading, you know, your income generation, your uh, wealth generation, and you want to change something, I can help you. I have helped literally thousands of traders, thousands and thousands of traders. Um, you get to work part, part time. Like I said, I have a program that is designed. You're only going to manage 10 minutes a day and maybe not even that. Okay. So, oops, sorry, here it is. So we do have, we do have a stock swing trader program for you that is going to do all the work. We're just talking about, you know, stock selection, stocks that have really high odds of, of, of succeeding. 
Uh, it's $199 a month. As with all of our programs, the price actions, uh, the prices are going to go up. So if you want to lock in uh, $199 a month, this is your stock swing trading program. Uh, this gives you access to the Stock Swing Trader, which is uh, a uh, email newsletter that is being sent out Monday. That letter, that uh, um, newsletter, uh, will have the overall market analysis, will have the sector analysis, will tell you what is likely to happen in that particular week uh, with extreme precision. Uh, we're also going to be calling trades. You're going to have access to a performance portfolio, portfolio that I'm going to show you in a little bit where we post all our trades. You're going to have access to a private Twitter feed for trailing for those people that need extra hand holding. So it is a service for self-directed traders, traders that don't have time to scan on weekends, don't have time to analyze the market, don't have time and want this already packaged. You have, you're going to find more information if you go to my website. This is actually the Stock Swing Trader. This is the private Twitter feed. And by the way, don't try to follow because you're not going to get accepted. We need to get an email from you. You need to We need to match the payment information with your email. So we have hundreds that are trying to get it. I was like, what? Anyways, so this is what it's all about. And I just want to share some information about the market right now. Okay. Because we were talking about buy pockets earlier and the uh, buying opportunities. And I know we have a little bit of uh, uh, time left. And but actually, before we go to charts, let me show you real quick. Uh, this is uh, this is where you find us. Um, uh, you go to our website. And and by the way, the link is over here. Uh, it is tradeoutloud.com forward slash swing trader. All in one word, tradeoutloud.com forward slash swing trader. And it takes you to this page over here. And I think it's very important because I put my money with my, where my mouth is. And if you scroll to the very bottom of the page, you could actually click on this view swing trading performance. Okay. And if you click on this, it's going to take you to the performance. This is actually January and this is not even updated. I'm going to show you the updated version of it. We're up over 55% percent, percent guys. Okay. For January. All right, so here you have 2022, 2021, 2020, uh, you have 2019, and you get the picture, okay? Now, before we continue, this is the performance that we have for this year. This is, you can see January, um, this is the uh, access to the performance portfolio. Not only that, but uh, we do offer a position sizing calculator. We show you, you know, how you need to use it. We provide you guidelines for trading, for swing trading. Uh, we're explaining the PNL. We're explaining, um, uh, we're actually providing for those of you that are using the Think for Swing platform, we're providing you with my personal layout so you have a winning layout to start with because the, this is the canvas this is your window to profitability you need to have a really robust layout other than that if you're like oh my gosh so let me pull this chart up you could see whether there that's a clutter trader uh or a trader that is not trading for a living based on the layout if you have like a system for the layout and the charts are not moving all around uh, that is the person that is trading because when you're trading, you're not pulling charts here and there. You're not, you're just trading or your obligation as a trader. And that's what all institutional traders do. And by the way, the layout here, I didn't invent it. It is the layout that my mentor provided and I have adapted it for the uh, think or swim. It is a, an institutional layout, institutional layout. You got option expiration. You got charting here. I'm going to show you. I'm using uh, the charting that I'm using here. If you want access to it, you're going to get it over here. Uh, ear to debt performance. So you have a lot of things that are going on. Okay. So now let's get to charting. We were talking earlier. I still have three minutes left. So we were uh, talking earlier about buy pockets. This is a buy pocket, a pullback, a consolidation, and a run up. You can see this one right here. This is the buy pocket as well. It's not a sustainable because I usually like to use three or five bar pullbacks and it's derived from Fibonacci because you need to see one, uh, two, you, you need to see three to five bar pullback or eight bar pullback before a consistent rotation. It's just uh, uh, it's just the way it works into the market. And here you have another buy pocket. You can see the price action. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen tomorrow. You want to you want to know what's going to happen tomorrow? 
Isn't it cool? All right. This is today's uh, this is today's price auction into the spies. If the price tomorrow is going to get over four hundred dollars and twenty cents, it's going to go up, and it's going to go up to about four hundred and three dollars, and throughout the week it may go back to four hundred five or even higher into the four hundred six. However, if it's going to start breaking today's low, whatever the low is going to be today, or whatever high it's going to be today, again, it needs to take out. So tomorrow, not today. Tomorrow, if we take out the high of today, it's going to go higher. If we take out the low, we're going to revisit the 292. So if you want to join the program, again, it's $199 a month. It's literally peanuts compared to the profits that we're going to be making. Uh, and again, this is a service for self-directed traders. Well, we do all the work for you. We provide you trades on a civil platter. Okay, this is it for me. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. Uh, and ooh, nice. Thanks so much, guys. All right. Uh, this is a wrap for today. I'm just open for questions for the next 10 seconds. <laughs>